Hey, what's up, YouTube? This is Engineer Gaming, and this is our strategy guide covering Crow. Now, once again, the structure will be the basic and advanced tutorial videos, then we'll move on to his equipment, we'll cover, cover perks, and then we'll talk about his actual strategies and tactics. Crow is the trapper. He hunts and traps the monster. Gobi, your pet bat ray, outlines any nearby creatures. Send him in any direction, and he'll sniff out the monster. The stasis gun slows the monster down. Rapid fire shots slow the monster for a very short time. Hold the fire button to charge a shot, which slows the monster longer, allowing you to switch to other pieces of gear. Quick bursts with your long rifle do normal damage, but holding the fire button charges a shot, which ignores the monster's armor, dealing direct damage to its health. Remember to use your mobile arena. Find long, open paths for Gobi. This maximizes his visibility and the chance he'll find the monster. If you know where the monster's hiding but can't see it, send Gobi. He'll highlight the monster and alert your teammates. Lead with a short burst from your stasis gun. Its effects last long enough for you to switch to your long rifle. Perfecting this cycle keeps the monster slow, maximizes your damage, and keeps your teammates safe. Charge shots from your long rifle completely bypass the monster's armor. Once the armor is gone, switch to rapid fire shots. They deal damage at a better rate than charge shots. First up in his equipment is his kinetic long rifle. A single shot damage is 70 base and 77 max. Charge shot is 60 base and 66 max. And that'll do directly to his health no matter what his armor is. Charge time is 1 second. Clip size is 6. Reload speed 2 seconds and a fire rate of 180 rounds per minute. Next up is his stasis gun. The charge shot duration slows the monster for 10 seconds. Charge time of 1 second. Clip size is 20 with a reload speed of 2.5 seconds, fire rate of 200 rounds per minute. The reason we didn't include the single shot duration is because it's less than a second, so it's literally so short there's really no point in having a time for it. Lastly is the Pet Bat Ray Gobi. Its range is 200 meters base and 220 max, and that's, is, is, that's as far as it'll fly uninterrupted assuming he doesn't run into any walls. There is no cooldown, as soon as he stops flying you can throw him again and he'll cry every time he spots the monster. Now for perks, the first perk we recommend is Quick Switch. When you're fighting in a dome, you want to be have Gobi out as much as possible, so having Quick Switch will make it easier for you to switch to him as soon as the monster becomes unhighlighted, so you can throw him again, so that way everyone will always know where the monster is in a dome. And he combos really well with getting a charged stasis shot, then switching directly into your long rifle to do damage, and then back into the stasis gun, or throwing Gobi again. So having quick switch allows you to switch between all of those rather quickly. Our mate is gone. We may survive. I mean, we will certainly survive. I think. Gobi, come here. You okay, healing kill with start job. Stand still, please. The second perk we recommend is Jump Height. This will allow you to dodge incoming attacks to allow you to stay alive longer, so that way the dome will be up longer so you could in turn do more damage to the monster. As well as Jump Height will allow you to gain ground a little bit quicker with each burst, assuming you burst and wait to hit the ground to be able to get that first initial burst from the Jump Height again. So you'll be able to gain on the monster faster, allowing you to dome it easier. Lastly, the third perk is either damage resistance or jetpack recharge. This one is you can take your pick. We highly recommend you use the first one, and if not that, then the second one. These are just there, just for some reason you didn't want to use those two. These will help. Damage resistance will just allow you to take more damage before going down, and jetpack re recharge 
can allow you to dodge a little bit easier, and you can gain some ground to make it slightly faster on doming. Now for our actual strategies and tactics. Like most trappers with Crow, you want to use your jetpack sparingly so that whenever you get the monster in the dome, he can't just get an easy down on you. You want to be able to still navigate through the dome and dodge his incoming attack. So you, that way allow you to keep the dome up so your team can do work on the monster's health. Next thing I want to talk about is Gobi. You want to be using him as much as possible. So every time you have him, pick a direction. You want to throw him. Make sure you don't throw him directly into a wall because then it will stop. Make sure you get a good area with a nice line of sight, preferably with you being up high, so that way it's Gobi will clear most obstacles, and it's better to throw be up high and to aim slightly downward opposed to being lower and aiming up, because Gobi does have a height limit on what he can detect. It's pretty high, but if you throw him fairly like up a hill, it's going to be harder for him to detect anything. Also, when you're in a dome... The first thing you want to do once you get the monster domed is you want to throw Gobi just to give your team an idea of where the monster is in the dome. Also, if the monster is being very mobile and moving around the dome a lot, then you can periodically switch to Gobi and throw him out just so your team can keep tabs of where he is. Now, dealing with caves as Gobi, the way I like to do it is you pick one entrance and you throw Gobi down that way and you go in a different entrance because that way you can see, like, all right, if he's in the cave that you're going down, then you'll be able to see him. If he was in a different part, then Gobi would have been able to see him. So that way you can cover more ground quickly without having to do the time for it. There! Gobi's got it! Stage one, no problem. Congrats. That means monsters. Let's try this again. Cloaking. Here, bud. Shield is low! Shield's out! Here, bird. Can't see, can't smell. Nice little advantage. Grenade ready! Take it out! Go it. Footprints. Gobi sees it. Kraken's on us. Gobi, come here. Now for the use of his stasis gun. The single shot does so little it's better to not even use it, so just stick with using a charge shot from it, because you'll get a solid 10 seconds of him being slowed, so if you're fast enough with that you can then get him slowed, switch to your long kinetic wrong life roll, and then get off 9 charge shots and switch back and then get off another stasis shot and you can have him com slowed for the duration of a fight while doing significant damage to him, opposed just constantly firing the single shots and not being able to do anything else 
and still only barely slowing him down. Now for how to use his kinetic long rifle. Since you can charge up a shot and you'll do direct health damage and skip through the armor, it's best to be doing that once the monster has a lot of armor. If it gets lower to like one or two bars, since you, you do deal more damage with a single shot, it's better to switch to just doing single shots then, and to just to drain the little bit of armor left. And then if he doesn't have any armor, always do a single shot. A charge shot doesn't do extra damage if he's out of armor. So just, if there's no armor, always stick with the single shots. Also, the monster gauges when to leave a fight, usually by the amount of armor he has. So if he has a whole bunch of armor, he'll stay in the fight. But he won't be paying attention to the fact that you're slowly doing health damage to him. So then he'll actually be taking permanent damage opposed to just temporary damage in a fight. So then whenever he leaves, he'll actually be lower health than when he started. Because you were sitting there taking away his health instead of worrying about getting his armor lower, which Assault can do on, fine on his own. I, I'm hit! I'm down! Crow's equipment combos very well together, so you're going to want to be cycling through them as much as possible. So start with either Gobi just to find out where the monster is. If you know where he is, then make sure you want to use a stasis gun, get a charge shot off, then you can easily switch to your kinetic long rifle, and then start dealing damage with that. And then once you, you after about 8 or 9 seconds, you want to switch back to the stasis gun to get then get off another long charge stasis shot and then again cycle through your weapons and just keep doing that periodically just to be the most as, as effective as you possibly can Michael, you can behemoth. Jetpacks, dodge. do you feel it beast my shrapnel digging into your hide revenge bullseye all right that's our guide for crow you can check out our other guides that we made in the description below also let us know what you guys think of this if you have any more tips and tricks and who you want to see next thanks for watching